You might remember Peter Wells from uh, such things as our panel discussion last night. Uh, for those of you who weren't here, um, Peter is a desktop analyst currently working with UNSW Sydney. He's also a technology commentator writing for the Sydney Morning Herald. Um, Peter is going to be showing a self-service means better user guide. So take it away, Peter. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you. And um, oh. <laughs> thank you. Wait till you see it. It's not that good. Um, all right. So yeah, yeah. So the the. Um, discussion today is self-service means better user guides and normally when you have a kind of blanket statement like that um, you spend a good 20 minutes kind of arguing the point I'm not going to <laughs> I just kind of think it, it makes sense like if, if you're going to ask your users to be installing stuff themselves running little fixes themselves that kind of stuff you really do need to have uh, better user guides out there um, and this talk, this talk was very very different up until Wednesday morning and I blame James for um, all the extra work that I had to do this week to kind of change it. But basically, the original story, and I, actually, I'll just jump into it. So this talk itself is a sequel to last year's talk, um, and there is a bit of a callback from last year. You don't have to remember it. It won't be on the test. But um, basically, I was going to talk about um, all the different ways we're kind of engaging with our customers. Because like I said, once you've got self-service in place, um, you, you're kind of disconnecting a little bit from the customers um, as, as that starts to be used more heavily. So you kind of need to get back in, and, and I, I personally believe, you need to, to spend more time um, organising events for, your, say, your users. And so this is one of the things we've done here. I was chatting with, this, uh, with someone last night about this, actually, the fact that we're running uh, user training centres, uh, sorry, sessions for some of our new products. Um, around campus, and if you work in an education environment, um, which a lot of people put their hands up yesterday saying they did, uh, I think it's something you really should do. I mean, we get these lecture halls for free, um, so you can kind of uh, run a, a session whenever you need to, and it's a really, really great way of, um, of yeah, like I said, just kind of uh, getting back in touch with... Tony, you're not uh, getting the time of there, mate. Um, <laughs> I talk way too much, so I just got to make sure that someone's keeping an eye on it. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's a really, really great way of kind of connecting with your, your customers and, and also just finding out like what are the pain points that people are having with some of the new stuff. Um, so that's one of the things we've been doing. You can see here there's a typo on that in, um, invite. It's for Mac users for Mac users, which is nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, someone asked me yesterday, like, are, are these well attended? Um, and so I went through the, the attendance uh, spreadsheet this morning. Um, and we've been running these since we've started rolling out Office 365 at UNSW. Um, that's been about three months, I think. Uh, we've had over 300 people attend one of these sessions. So they are surprisingly popular. Um, and some of them have actually kind of gone on to um, inspire me to do certain user guides based on some of the feedback I've gotten in classes. The things that I I'm always surprised to hear once you're actually talking to the humans using the software, like what the things are that trip up people. Ooh, I've never used the iPhone app, it's pretty good for Keynote. Anyway, um, one of the other things we do, um, and one of the other things I was gonna talk about was these regular um, get-togethers that we have with, uh, to use corporate speak, the key stakeholders around uh, campus, uh, which is basically just like the, the really hardcore nerds. Um, and. And also, say, so we do, like, we bring in the IT professionals from uh, local ITs around campus. We also bring in uh, just some of our power users. Um, it's been really great. Obviously, pizza there you can see is the emoji. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure you guys know how to book a room on campus and order in pizza. So there's not a lot I need to tell you about doing that as well. Ooh. Shouldn't stand in front of that mic. I did want to tell you about our new shiny, beautiful um, website but it's not done yet. <laughs> but I keep getting told by the web team that one day it will be done. Um, it was supposed to be done by last year's X-World. Um, <laughs> but one day it's going to be done, and it's going to be great. And I do, you know, I, I, you know I'm making fun, but I, I do really want to populate um, our website with as much uh, information as possible as well. Uh, so once again, just kind of supporting our users uh, 
so that they can self-serve. I was going to tell you about Sway, which who uses Office 365? Microsoft doing well in tertiary. All right, cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I really, really dig Sway. So this is one of the things I've been using because of the fact we don't have a decent website. Um, and it's, it's been kind of fun. So this is, this is Sway in action. It creates these kind of really cool little, um, they're kind of halfway between a PowerPoint presentation and a website. They're kind of funky. Um, they are uh, responsive as well, so you can use them on uh, an iPhone and they look great. And so th this uh, was some instructions we sent out uh, to our users and people followed it. It was really surprising to see because we, the year before we had to do basically the same set of instructions to give it all, that, all our users. It was a little bit complicated. Uninstall the version of, uh, of all of the Adobe apps that you have and then reinstall them via this. And last year we sent all our users uh, a two-page PDF and not one of our users followed that. Uh, this time around we, we sent out this little sway and said, look, just open this, this web page on your phone hold it in your phone, uh, in your hand, and then follow the instructions there and do it on your computer. And surprisingly, it did well. Like 200 people were able to follow it and upgrade their machines themselves. So um, yeah, it just shows that I think one of the things, you know, uh, there was a statement yesterday that like people are too busy to read email, which is totally fair. Um, I think that that was the main thing. Like when, last year when they got their the, the wall of text as a PDF, they didn't read it. When they saw this and scrolled and found out that the page only goes for so long, I might play it again. Oops. Ah. I'm ruining my story. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's really simple. There's not a lot of text on the page, and it's mainly images. And I think that's one of the reasons why it was followed, is that people saw that it wasn't going to be something that was a, a really hard thing for them to do. It was just a really easy thing to, for them to, to follow along with. Like, basically, four steps. Everyone was able to do it. I was also going to talk about some of the uh, GIF creation tools. The kids love GIFs. Um, we all know that. Uh, the neckbeards love GIFs. So, um, but yeah, you can use either one. Uh, so GIF, Giphy Capture is, they're both owned by kind of GIF sharing sites. So they're both free apps. Uh, that one, on, Giphy Capture is basically, basically screen capture. Uh, GIF Brewery, you throw uh, MP4s into it and it'll spit out GIFs. So two different little tools that you can use. I was going to talk about all of that kind of stuff, but basically Rich did it better last year. And that's up on, um, on YouTube right now. So if you do want to watch Rich talk about, he was talking about documentation in general um, and documentation for kind of his support staff. But you just, you know, take all of the advice that he gives and it's a fantastic talk. I, I would recommend watching it if you weren't here last year. Take all of his advice and just replace um, support staff with end user, and it's a very good place to start. So what I am going to talk about today is uh, video. And I think, you know, that was partly because uh, James's uh, presentation on using screen, what was the screen capture tool? ScreenFlow. ScreenFlow also allows you to export to GIFs. Um, yeah, so ScreenFlow, that, that, that room was packed the other day, which was great to see. And I think it makes sense. Like, a lot of people are pushing towards video. Everyone knows that video is pretty, a very simple, fast way of someone um, of learning a topic. So I think a lot of us are trying to get a little bit more video in. I, I know I'm definitely trying to do it. And here's the callback to last year, which was this video. So I showed this video last year. It kind of explains why the, the video was made, so I'm not going to go into that. Um, but yeah, it's just a couple of seconds long. Um, I'll play it for you now. Until yesterday, when you used a Mac at UNSW, your home folder lived on a server, and all that data was streamed down to the Mac. In the last few weeks, those Macs and servers haven't been working well together, so we've needed to make a change. So now, we're keeping your stuff on the server and giving you a home that lives on your Mac. All the files that were on your desktop yesterday are now in a desktop folder inside the student server. Just look for your ZID folder. The big difference here is now your files and preferences will not follow you from Mac to Mac and classroom to classroom. You'll need to remember to save your work to the server or a cloud service like OneNote, Google Drive or Dropbox. You can also save your work to a USB drive. Just remember to take it with you and make regular backups of the drive. USB drives are easy to lose. You're responsible for your data, so save early and save often. 
Thanks for watching and enjoy the faster, more reliable Mac Labs at UNSW. Yay. I hate that video. I really, really, really hate that video. Um, but, uh, and, and that's one of the, <laughs> I was going to rename this uh, talk is uh, basically the mistakes I made in the last year. Because uh, basically, this is the first video I've made for UNSWIT. And based on that, someone said, oh, hey, I've got a service. Can you make a video for it? And 46 videos later, um, I've made a bunch of really, really awful videos. Um, and I'm going to show them to you all today. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to show you why I hate them. Um, and we can, sh we can explain why. So you know, for this, by the way, I like this quote. Um, yeah, it's not just the, the kind of content or, sorry, the, the production values on that is a little bit skeezy. I don't really like it all that much. But there are reasons that it doesn't work anymore in my eyes as a video. And I'll explain that in a moment. But just to let you know, that video itself, if you're thinking, well, you know, I, I don't have any uh, video experience, I don't know how to make one. That video that you saw there, that was made um, after my baby went to bed at about 11.30 that night. Um, and then it was packaged up at about midnight and sent to every single lab computer. Um, so it, it was made in about an hour. Uh, so I, I think it was, it's not too bad for that. Um, and these are the two tools I used to make that video. Because I didn't have any kind of, I didn't have the time to make a proper video. All of the images were just created in Keynote, and then I just exported that Keynote as a movie, recorded the voiceover with my phone, um, and you can actually hear, like, if you listen close enough, you can hear a bus drive past and also my baby wake up. But it still sounds okay. I, I muffled most of it, and then I threw on a bass thing because my, I, I have a voice of a prepubescent child, but um. <laughs> That was basically it. That, that was all I did to it. Combined it in iMovie and spat it out. And then Cameron uh, looked after distribution, so he stuck it on all of the lab machines uh, for the next morning. But I'll play it back to you without sound. And here's why I hate it. And it becomes pretty evident straight away that this thing doesn't, uh, doesn't work unless the audio is playing as well. There's, there's no other information being given to you um, that uh, that you can, you can get without the audio. And that's terrible for uh, accessibility, first of all, most importantly. Um, we, you know, we, we have uh, a duty, I think, to uh, make videos or make anything that is available for all of our users. So that's one big um, thing I cannot stand about this. But it also means that it doesn't work in other areas as well. So a lot of the videos I've put together recently um, we've started using on the digital signage that we have around campus. And I'm sure you guys have digital signage if you're a big campus as well. Um, it's fun to try to get stuff onto that, um, or at least at UNSW it is. Um, every single TV is kind of owned by a different faculty, so you have to, ah, it takes a while. But I, I've gotten there now. <laughs> I, I know all the people I have to email these days. Um, anywho, uh, yeah, so we've got digital signage. If I have a bit of text, explaining what's going on on that video, then it can work on the digital signage as well. And the other thing is it can work on social because um, I think it's like 84% of all videos watched on Facebook are watched silently. Um, and that makes sense when you think about it. You know, you're probably scrolling Facebook either on a bus or in an office when you're not supposed to. And so you don't want people to know that you're watching a video. So majority of videos on Facebook are actually watched uh, silently as well which is one of the reasons why, if you watch anything on Facebook, you'll see that there's just text flying all over the shop. So with all that in mind, here was another video that I made a couple of months later. I'm not too sure. This, this year has been a bit of a blur. Um, but here it is. 365 gives you the ability to work anywhere on any device. I've got a cold. You can, you can start a document on your Mac and share it with your colleagues on their PC. Review the changes in a browser. Timing's off there, I don't like that. And sign off on your mobile phone. Just sign into Office with your ZID. And so a couple of things that have been added to that one. First of all, it is it will actually work on digital signage uh, because of all the text involved. There is a bit of uh, music playing in the background now, which I definitely think is, uh, if you're making videos, always just throw like a really small track of music under the video. Um, it can clean up a lot of errors and mistakes um, of, 
of audio, or audio that you've created. Um, and yeah, just like, especially like I've, there'll be one video later on, see if you can guess it, um, where you, clearly two microphones were used because I forgot to add something into the video, so I had to record it once I was home. Um, and so yeah, the, the music playing underground, uh, underneath that kind of really helps, you know, fix any of those, those issues there. Also, one other thing to note, I don't know, it's really hard to get the audio, because you want to say something as well, because you, you definitely want the video to work uh, just by listening to the audio as well. So it's kind of hard, it's kind of tricky to get that, that timing right. You just, there's no, no real way, there's no real science I've found. You just had to kind of listen back and forth and get it right. First of all, in terms of text, you, you want the simplest words possible. Um, text can only appear on the screen for a couple of seconds, so it has to be nice and sh sharp, uh, short, sharp phrases, uh, no big words. Um, only dumb people use big words to sound impressive. Really, use the, the simplest words absolutely possible. Um, and yeah, and then just try to get that audio Right, you just have to play it back a couple of times and make sure that it kind of fits. Um, the best way I can describe it is that if, if anyone's ever played a video game and you're watching a cutscene and like the subtitles are appearing underneath the, the people chatting and it just drives you nuts if, if the subtitles are either a bit too fast or a bit too slow and you're like, I know you just said that, just go to the, and you, that's, that's kind of what you're trying not to get uh, on one of these videos. It's, it's really tricky to get kind of, I'm talking about email and then the email text appears. You know, you just have to play it back until you get the feeling. Oh, by the way, that, that whole animation thing, if you're like, well, I can't do that. I can't do that either. That was uh, a motion template that I found um, just on someone's site. It was like their free motion template to uh, basically get more followers on Facebook, I think it was. It was like some terrible reason to use it. Uh, let me just... Pull it back up. 365 gives you the ability to so, work anywhere on any device. The screen you itself was actually all Facebook app. crap, and so I just replaced with Facebook with uh, Office 365. And then people thought, wow, you're so great at animation. Nah. It was a template. I dropped the files in. Uh, I'm lazy as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so as you can see, I try to make the videos um, under about 30 seconds uh, if I can. Sometimes I get to about 60 seconds. Uh, this is yet another one. As you can see as well, I've been uh, on the Office 365 project for a couple of months, so that's why there's a hell of a lot of Office 365 in, in the presentation today. Um, but yeah, I just tried to keep them nice and short and sharp, and about 60 seconds is my max. And because of that, they do have a kind of advertising feel to them, I think. There's a little bit of a... Uh, so these are playing silently, so you don't have to hear my stupid voice while you hear my stupid voice. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, what was I going to say about this one? Sorry. Yeah, so sorry, I've made a lot of them. Um, I, I tend to keep them very, very short, just because uh, YouTube supports uh, playlists, so you just use them. Um, you know, we've got a playlist of uh, Office 365 videos. Uh, there's about 22 videos in there, each one covering something as small and as simple as installing on your Android device. Um, so yeah, the, I'll never try to kind of make a video with more than one idea in it. And I always try to kind of give it a why as well. So if I am telling you about some new feature, um, I'll also try to explain why you might use it in your day, just as a way of kind of giving someone who might have to sit through the video, a reason why they've actually done that. Um, and here's a great book if you've never heard, I'm sure you've heard it mentioned before. Uh, Apple people always talk about it because uh, uh, it's got a lot of Apple examples in there. They, they talk about how great Steve Jobs is quite a bit. Um, if you don't want to read the whole book, well, there's a TED talk because of course there is. Um, and you know, so you can watch that too because people don't read anymore. We just watch videos and that's the whole point of this show. But yeah, the one thing I don't do, because they do have this kind of, because the 30 second, 60 second format does tend to be a little bit kind of, it sounds like a commercial sometimes for the products. And that's by design as well. Like I, I am trying to kind of sell our services um, and sell the reason for watching the video um, in the video itself. But um, I just think it's important not to oversell. 
So for this video, this is uh, introducing OneDrive. Don't worry, you're not going to have to sit through it. Um, this video never at one point says, and OneDrive is better than Dropbox, because I'm not going to lie to all my users. <laughs> and um, I, I don't think that over-promising something like that um, is going to be good anyway. What I, do, what I do tell them is, hey, it's free as part of your ZID. And hey, you get one terabyte of data about it, uh, with it, sorry. So that's kind of cool. You don't get that with your free Dropbox account. And then I just kind of go through the, the standard setup. And the reason I do that is I always bring it back to, I've had a couple of meetings with um, some people at UNSW. Like I said, people will get, now that I've made a couple of these things, I'll get these people in, in a meeting who will say, oh, you're the video guy. Can you make me a video on our brand new service that's rolling out? And this happens at UNSW, I'm sure it happens nowhere else, but sometimes at UNSW, there's a really great idea that goes through like 14 committees and comes out the other end, not a great idea. Um, and so sometimes when I'm sitting with those people and they're, they're saying, hey, can you make me this 30 second video about this thing, saying how great it is, I just have to say, look, I can give you like a three minute walkthrough, but it's not a 30 second how great it is because I can't figure it out myself and I work in IT. So just again, it's the Apple Maps thing. You don't want to oversell something. If you oversell something, then you're going to have this Apple Maps problem where today, Apple Maps is actually great, but no one actually cares because it was launched so badly. Um, and it was oversold at the time of being better than Google Maps, which it wasn't. It's good now. The turn, turn by turn is fantastic, by the way. But yeah, so you just need to be careful, especially Everything you'd make that is a kind of very short video will feel like an ad. So just be careful in the tone in that sense, I think. So here are some of the tools I use. Um, I do like stock images, even though they can be terrible sometimes. Um, so I, I use Shutterstock is my main place for stock images. It's, it's super expensive. So if you have a friend in the marketing department, um, maybe ask them if you can just jump on their account for a little while, which is what I've basically done for most of my stuff. It is ridiculously expensive. I, I checked the bill the other day. It was like 120 euros a month. Yeah, it's expensive. Envato is, I don't know if I'm saying that right, is a, an Australian startup, actually. And they've got a bunch of great uh, motion templates and graphics and audio files and a whole bunch of other stuff. That, like, anything you could imagine in terms of crea creativity, um, they've got there. And it's actually really well priced. Uh, I find their stuff is really, really great. It tends to be about anywhere from about 12 bucks to 28 bucks for like a full motion template that you can download and, and play around with. So again, so, something that'll just make your video look like a really highly polished animation without you doing any work or knowing how to animate anything. So I really like Envato, if I'm saying that correctly. Um, the other thing to sign up, the reason to sign up today is um, every month they send out an email of a bunch of free stuff that you can download. So um, in the last year or so, I've ended up with uh, a whole bunch of like corporate, um, you know, the, that standard kind of corporate audio that you hear on every uh, video. But yeah, it, it's some pretty good stuff. So I really, really do like Envato. Video Blocks is a, a service. It's kind of like stock uh, stock footage, a stock footage service, and um, it's ridiculously well priced which means its videos aren't 100% great all the time. Sometimes you, 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 know, you do a search on something and the results are absolutely awful. Um, but sometimes they, it really surprises you. So by cheap, it is 99 bucks a year. So that is incredibly good, uh, considering we're paying more for the Shutterstock um, per month. Uh, 99 bucks a year, I think, is fantastic. Um, and I'll show you this video was actually uh, using some of their stock footage. So I've uh, the footage itself was, uh, the laptop just had a green screen on it, and so I've added our Office 365 login. Um, oh, has funky music, I didn't know that. So that's it. People didn't know how to log in to our login portal. Um, <laughs> But yeah, uh, so, so that, I mean, that video was, you know, it was green screen. It took like half an hour to make that video. And it looks super, super polished, you know? It looks like a, a proper 
video made by someone with a budget, which is not me. I actually do have, like, you know, I'm still answering tickets outside of all of this. Um, another reason to make friends with uh, the marketing department, I mean, most of them all use Macs anyway, so you probably know them, is um, they have really cool stock footage as well that they've paid professionals to come to campus and make for them. Um, so this is kind of some cool footage that I've grabbed from them. It took months to kind of, everything at universities takes months, but it, <laughs> it took months to kind of uh, finally get um, a chance to look through some of their video footage, uh, their archives, um, and grab some stuff. But yeah, there's some really nice stuff in there. Haven't used any of it yet, um, but I'm sure I will one day. Um, and it's very, very pretty. And I, I, I just kind of feel that that kind of stuff might make a really nice introduction before a very, you know, bland screen recording that I might do later. So it's always handy to have that kind of stuff to just spice stuff up. Uh, so some of the other tools I use, I use uh, VMware um, to create. Uh, I've got a, a VM of a Windows box and a, um, and a Mac on my machine. And I just have them both uh, with a really, really generic sounding logo, login name. The username is username. It's even got its own Apple ID, which is also username. Um, and so yeah, it just means that I can kind of punch in those kind of those standard uh, generic names and passwords and stuff in the video, and then people don't get to see what my email address is because people have emailed me when they've seen my email address appear on the on the videos. It's like, hey, I saw your email in the how to whatever in the how to do email video, so I'm sending you one. Anyway, it's a bizarre world. Um, but yeah, so VMware is really really handy. I like the fact that you can do the snapshots and roll back, and so you know if I uh, am screen recording, installing something on, on, uh, on JSS, and I forget something or I forget a step, I can just kind of roll it back and start again. Uh, so that's the, the main reason I use uh, VMware for the actual videos themselves. I use QuickTime as my main screen recording tool because it's very, very easy. Uh, it's, and obviously, it's built into every single Mac. Um, I also use Final Cut Pro. Uh, to do all of my editing. You've probably heard that Final Cut Pro was fantastic and then Apple killed it and now it sucks. Um, that's partly true. Um, it, was, it was amazing <laughs> up until Final Cut Pro 7. It's actually really good again. So, you know, it sucked in 2011. It is 2017 now. So if you've heard bad things, maybe come back and try it. I, fi I find especially it is so much faster for me to get anything done in Final Cut Pro um, than uh, Adobe Premiere, which is basically the other main competitor for this kind of level of stuff. Um, I can fly through stuff on Final Cut Pro, and, I, and in the five-minute demo uh, sessions later this afternoon, I'm going to actually show you how to green screen out a, a laptop in Final Cut Pro, and also do like a, a, an iPhone how-to video. Um, and I'm going to fit both of those in in my allotted five-minute slot. So uh, that's how fast you can move in Final Cut. Um, it's really, really cool. Like I said, try it out. If you've got a Linda subscription, uh, subscription at your university as well, um, the, the training uh, stuff in Linda is fantastic for Final Cut. Uh, you can be up and running. It's still, it's really weird. It's like some of the choices they've made, if, especially if you've come from any other video editor, are still really, really weird in that perfectly Apple way of like, no, 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 this makes sense. Trust me. But um, it, it, it is super fast once you get the hang of it. I also do use um, ScreenFlow, uh, which James chatted about. Um, I tend to use that for the down and dirty, the really quick ones, uh, where I just want text on the screen. Um, but it's a, a really kind of fast edit. And one of the, oh, this is kind of out of order, but we all know how to record um, a video using QuickTime, yeah, uh, of your, your iPhone screen. Everyone knows you can do that, where you can just kind of jump in Select new movie, duck out of the way is the standard <laughs> kind of thing that everyone has to do. Select your iOS device, and then off you go. And you can see here, for the love of God, turn off re reduce motion as the first thing you do before you make a video about um, iOS devices. So I'm about to do that. If I can remember where it is. The settings app, that's where it is. Uh, so yeah, please, please um, turn off reduce motion uh, in any of your how-to videos for iOS or you'll make your users sick. Um, now, in terms of uh, actually getting a video together, what I tend to do is, first of all, as James said in his presentation on Wednesday, uh, move slow through the, the setup 
whatever it is that you're doing. Uh, because you can always speed it up later, although I would say be careful on the speeding things up thing. Like uh, a cross dissolve is probably going to look a bit, a bit better to an end user. If it's a progress bar that just goes across the screen gracefully, that's fine. Speed that up. But if it's like a spinning, anything spinning, you're going to make people sick if you sp sp speed that up. And it also makes them think, well, hang on a second, how long does this really take? Whereas if you just cross dissolve, they don't really know. Like, they're, they're used to, movies have taught them that a cross dissolve is a passage of time. And you don't need to know how long that was. Um, so yeah, so I always go for the uh, cross dissolve over uh, speeding things up when I can. Um, but yes, in terms of actually getting stuff together, what I'll, what I'll tend to do is I will figure out what I'm going to do. So I'm going to install all of the Office apps from self-service on a Mac. Um, so I'll sit that down. I won't actually write the script at that point because I always forget stuff. Um, after a year of doing this, um, I've realized that my brain just forgets certain steps that you need to take um, to do any task because I've done those tasks so many times. So it's much easier for me to just really slowly go through and do exactly what I would do or what I want the end user to do. Stop, have that recording, and then watch that recording back and write the script as I'm watching the recording back. Because that way I know I'm not screwing up the order. I'm not, you know, uh, oh, suddenly our... Our Outlook prompts you now to just pop in your ZID and you don't need your password. Like That kind of stuff that I've forgotten that we've updated or fixed, um, I, I, you know, it's much easier to do that. Uh, write the script while you're watching your own playback. And then I cut it together pretty quickly. So <clears throat> this is actually a video. Yeah, It's the most boring video um, of the presentation. Um, so I'll just talk over it. But, um, so this one is actually done using uh, ScreenFlow. So I'm using just all of their basic kind of edits and stuff. I find their editor, the editing tools, uh, everything else I like. Like I like the zooming in on things and following the cursor and all of that kind of stuff. It's just the editing tools themselves are a little bit clunky, a little bit kind of, you know, baby's first editor. And I, that's the thing that kind of drives me nuts. Um, but for this, this was actually a discussion someone had on Yammer, because some people use Yammer. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, but yeah, so someone was on Yammer saying, um, uh, I've just got an Office 365 and I have no idea how to share a file to someone outside of UNSW. It doesn't work. It's stupid. Um, and so I saw that. And in 30 minutes, I was able to turn this video around of basically showing them how to do that and posted it straight into Yammer and said, uh, does this help? And they loved it so much, they actually, they, they tend to, they found, uh, I found out they were actually a marketing person from one of our larger faculties. And so they sent it out in their newsletter, like a couple of days later, of like, look, look how awesome IT is. They just showed me this thing when I was complaining about something. So, yeah, I do actually now hang out on Yammer, so I can find these little moments. Um, but yeah, so I use, as a distribution method, uh, we do use Yammer, uh, we are using YouTube. You will get better metrics on all of your videos if you use whatever the native platform's video player is. So if, you want, if you're uploading to Facebook, you will get much, much more views on Facebook if you actually upload it as a Facebook video than embedding a YouTube video on your Facebook feed. It's a pain in the butt. So if anyone has any kind of workaround, I don't do it myself um, because at this stage, it's not something I'm being measured on. If, it, if I was being measured on that, that kind of... Um, that engagement, um, then I might actually care about that kind of stuff, but I don't at this stage. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just one of those things. All of the major internet companies hate each other, so they're always going to prioritize video that lives on their native platform over something that sends people out, out of their way. And Facebook, to be honest, is totally dodgy in the way it, it, it um, uh, looks at video numbers as well. They will consider a video watched if you watch it for three seconds. So if you are scrolling through your feed and you scroll past a video and then someone says, hey, Pete, and you go, yeah, you've watched a video. Like that is, that's how dodgy their metrics are. But hey, it's made them a bit of money. So God bless them. Uh, some of the other things I use, uh, a microphone. That's the most important thing uh, to take away from this. Uh, please get a decent microphone. These are two that I really like that are both under 200 bucks. So the one on the left is the Zoom H1. Uh, it's a really, really handy um, handheld microphone that you can just use to, to quickly in interview people. 
Um, it can also be used as a USB uh, microphone, and it does sound pretty good, but it's not the greatest thing in the world um, in terms of, it's not an easy thing to use as a USB mic. Uh, the podcaster on the side there is much easier. That's about 200 bucks as well. Uh, and it's an Australian company. Um, they're just up the road. So, um, you know, support your, your Aussie developers there. Uh, it's, it's a really, really nice mic. It sounds fantastic. Now, there's one thing of the, all the videos I showed today uh, that was missing from the videos. I don't know if anyone has noticed. Can anyone have a guess at what that thing was? No one wants to play? All right. Sorry? Oh, uh, that's true. That's true. Um, yeah, I don't like... Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's, that's more about me being antisocial. Actually, it all feeds into the same thing. Humans. There were no humans in the video. Rainbow unicorns. There was, there was also no rainbow unicorns, but more importantly, uh, there were no, no humans in the videos. And that's because uh, humans are really hard to film. Um, they, they kind of, you know, they require breaks and they require scripts written beforehand and they require lighting um, or they're going to look as realistic as they actually look. And no, no one wants to see what they actually look like on camera. And people just aren't good on camera. Like we're, very few people, sorry, are, are good on camera, and we call those people actors, and I don't work with any of them, and so it's very hard for me to just pull up an actor at a certain moment. So I have made videos, um, videos, sorry, over the last year with actual humans in them, and I hate them all. Like, I, I don't hate the humans. <laughs> if you're watching, thanks so much for the time that you put into the videos that we made together. But um, they're just not great, and it's, it's nothing to do with the humans involved. They're just not professional actors. Um, so I, don't t I tend not to use humans in my video unless they're just kind of there doing a thing and they're not being asked to, to say anything. So once again, I cannot wait for the moment that I actually do have access to real live humans that, I can, that will be happy to be uh, you, you know, filmed, but at this stage, no one in IT seems to be, you know, no one in IT has that spark I'm looking for, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Anyway, so I thought after all of this negativity and, and hating all of my work for the last year, um, I would actually uh, end on something, a video that I do like, I still like. And so I went through the 46 videos and I couldn't actually find one <laughs> that I liked. I hate them all. I just, I mean, I hate them all equally. But, um, <laughs> So I actually made one. And so Tuesday night, um, I put together this video, which I kind of feels like it's getting there. It feels a little bit more. First of all, it's got the corporate branding. I'm using the proper font. You know, everything's all grown up now. Um, but and then there's still bits I hate about this because I made it Tuesday, so I've had three days now to hate it. Um, but setting up a UNSW Mac is fast and easy. Just connect to the internet. Go through the Setup Assistant and your Mac will install everything you need to get started. Your Mac will prompt you to enter your ZID during setup. This is to help connect your Mac to UNSW services and to give you access to the UNSW Mac App Store, where you can download the software you need. Enter your Apple ID when prompted. This is the same ID you use on iTunes or the App Store. Then, choose a password to log into the Mac. It should be different from your ZID password and your iTunes password. When your Mac logs in for the first time, it will go to work setting itself up. Your Mac will download CrashPlan, backup software that runs in the background to protect your data. Sign into the self-service app with your ZID and you can download... Different microphone, Dropbox, there we the go, Marcus spotted it. Adobe Acrobat <laughs> and more. <laughs> Even install local printers and connect to your J drive. If you use OneDrive to store all your personal data, just sign into the app and all of your data will download to your new Mac. If you need any Humans. assistance along the way, call the UNSW <laughs> Help Desk and one of our Mac experts will be happy to help. So that, that final bit of footage, shot on an iPhone, because I realized I hadn't, you know, I realized I hated all of my videos and I wanted to show you something. Um, so. I basically walked up to Graham's desk, he was the guy on the, on the left, and said, Graham, you're pretty, sit down. Um, guy in a shirt, come over here. And, and that was basically 20 seconds of filming with an iPhone to throw in the end there. Um, but yeah, I, kind of, I, I feel that that one 
is kind of hitting some of the points that I've tried to get to now. Like the timing is a, is kind of okay. I don't mind the timing in terms of the the audio um, and the, the text that appears on screen. I I think it explains the setup process pretty well in a very very short way, without being too kind of commercially. Like it's it's not too uh, it's it's not tr uh, tooting our own trumpet too much, which I like as well. Um, yeah, I just kind of I feel that there's a little bit of a nice vibe to it. And all of the other footage, apart from the stuff shot on the iPhone, once again, that was all stock footage that um, all came for free with my $99 subscription to VideoBlocks. So um, I will show you in the afternoon session how to steal you know, stock images or uh, use stock footage you've paid for, I should say, um, and combine it with your own stuff so that you can throw it in there and, and make it look like a professional video. Um, but yeah, that's it. Uh, any questions at all? No? Excellent, thank you. Oh, sorry, everyone else had their cute babies, so here's my cute baby. Isn't she cute? She's real cute. Yeah, yeah, thank you.